Hi, welcome to the Property Show. I'm Jayashri Kurup, I'm editor at MBTV. I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Amrit Abhijat. He's the mission director of the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. He's joint secretary with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. And, and a historic day, sir, the affordable rental housing policy has finally become a reality. Uh, I thought it's, it's important that we discuss the ins and outs of it and figure out how it impacts the, uh, the urban India at large, right? Uh, would you like to start by giving us a brief of what, what are the four or five points that uh, people should be aware of? Yeah. See, as it stands uh, today, uh, we are aware that uh, the pandemic is very much there and uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, the world is fighting with it and it's been a devastating uh, experience for all of us. So uh, during this, we saw here in India that a large number of urban cities had the problem of reverse migration of uh, workers from industries, from uh, various professions, going back to uh, their uh, villages. And uh, one very important reason we discovered, and you perhaps knew it for a very long time, is that uh, they do not have a very good structured accommodation to stay while they are serving in the cities. And uh, in order to save on expenses, in order to save on living costs, and uh, for many, many various reasons, they stay either on unplanned, informal uh, settlements, slums, uh, sharing a very shanty accommodation to be able to make the ends meet. And whatever is saved, they want to send it back to their families where they, uh, they stay. Uh, once these industries started closing down or these occupations, manufacturing units because of COVID in the initial phases, there was this mad rush of people wanting to go back to their own homes because not only was it impacting on the economy also, but uh, uh, one found it very difficult to be able to maintain that kind of a uh, profile if uh, the wheels of the economy or the industry was not turning. So uh, we did see, you know, the entire country saw how they were uh, traveling all the way back to their villages uh, on roads and through buses and whatever was available. So uh, we were very concerned that we wanted to help them in a manner in which housing could be addressed because we feel that, uh, and there is data to show that industries which had this provision of housing being there in their industries and the families were also there along with the industrial worker or the manufacturing, they were not shipping uh, really, and they were in a secure environment. So uh, this became, in the sense, the kernel of the entire uh, uh, policy approach that we were taking, given the fact that we already knew that uh, there is a vast segment of urban migrants whose housing needs have to be uh, fulfilled to the extent that uh, not everybody wants an ownership housing. So the ministry has been working on the arrangement of our uh, Model Tenancy Act also, but uh, the ARHC particularly deals with the industrial workers, the students, uh, people working in the manufacturing sector. It does not really look at the entire rental market arrangement, which the ministry is constantly working on. And uh, uh, this is something uh, work in progress, I would say. But uh, this ARHC will cater to the urban poor and the migrant category of people who stay in cities for various professions and various industries, manufacturing units they work in. And in that sense, it is a big win-win for us because uh, uh, once you ensure that uh, these people have the working arrangement and they are able to stay in a good, nice place, then uh, they are able to uh, work out uh, better, uh, engage productively in their enterprise, improve upon their health, and uh, uh, stay close to the working units. So it also helps the entrepreneur or the manufacturing unit, so on and so forth. So this is the uh, largely the philosophy on which we started working on it. So how does this <clears throat> work? Uh, you already got a bank of housing, as I understand it. You've uh, already allocated about 600 crore to put in all the other facilities. How? Uh, what is this bank of housing that you are starting with? And uh, what are the facilities that you will add? Yeah, yeah. I think this is a good question. See, uh, we were always aware that there is a segment of population which does not want ownership housing. However, the government of India for a very, very long time had been advocating uh, ownership housing because uh, people wanted to stay in those situations. But given the fact that economy is changing, there is migration, there is intra-migration among cities, there was a catchment which was looking at it. 
we had uh, about uh, 13 lakh houses under genuine men ray of which about close to 11 lakh and uh, 11 and a half lakh had been given to various beneficiaries over a period but about 1 lakh houses do remain in various states which have not been formally allocated on account of them either not been complete on account of them being away from the livelihood centers on account of backward and forward linkages in terms of transport arrangements uh, schooling arrangements livelihood so on and so forth is not very clearly established so this was a catchment where we wanted and the state uh, this has been languishing for a very long time and the states were quite keen to put this out so uh, we decided that this would become the model one Uh, wherein the private entities will be encouraged to build these houses from the uh, as is various basis where they stand and once this is done then they will be able to rent it out along with the urban local body which will fix a minimal rent because we have to be very conscious of this fact that the social component needs to be addressed and it cannot lead to gentrification or studio apartments coming in genuine houses we are quite conscious that there is an ews lig category to which it will cater and uh, the houses will be done up absolutely uh, with modern facilities to the extent it's possible under this uh, uh, category and then these will be let out by the private entity they will be charging monthly rent the bidder there will be a concept of a bidding in model 1 and model 2 both so i'll explain model 1 right now model 1 is on the housing stock that we already have the bidding criteria would be that any private entity or public agency which comes forward with this uh, notion that the maximum uh, profits shared in the minimum possible time as in the turnaround factor should be the minimum and the profit which will be shared from the extra income that is generated suppose uh, you have an investor who invests 2 crores in a particular housing unit because the pipeline was not proper because lighting was not proper or perhaps the window panes had been broken out and he invests 2 crore rupees and they have about 200 residences they charge about 3000 rupees uh, per house and they are able to uh, accumulate an x amount so the first responsibility would be that the 2 crore invested by this private uh, entity would be recouped once the recoup has been done say in about 2 years time or 3 years time or 5 years time this uh, money that they would be earning over and above the investment then would be shared between the urban local body and the private entity until the 25th year of its operation so the benefit is that the private entity by investing an x amount of money would be able to raise rents so it gives an investable uh, opportunity investment opportunity to the private entity the urban local body is happy because a house which was languishing for very long time in which the central government has invested a large amount of money uh, in this houses uh, about 1 lakh 8000 houses we have invested about uh, close to 2000 crores was lying so this was a waste of a national resource this will also be utilized therefore the urban local body will get bonus for finance and we are very happy that these houses will now be given out to people who is who are working in various professions whether it is in the market as fruit sellers as workers as construction workers as people working in the uh, jewelry industry in surat say or in agra as uh, shoe makers or in moradabad for uh, 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 utensils and all that or, or maybe in tamil nadu in salem area wherever they are it is a split over 159 cities this 1 lakh 8000 and we are taken a modest uh, uh, target of 75000 houses because uh, out of these 1 lakh 8000 houses that we are saying there may be some uh, which at the present moment is not uh, uh, available for this uh, renting but has been allotted to some people or there are issues of other compliances but uh, there is a possibility that it may go beyond the 75000 target that we have what about the beneficiaries how do you identify the beneficiaries the beneficiaries will be from ews lig category they have to be necessarily urban uh, migrants but this will uh, be happening through the uh, urban local bodies coordination but there is no formal registration process as such we are quite conscious of the fact that this has to be a very fair uh, level playing field and the private entity uh, would ensure that you know 
under various professions. And the list is very illustrative because we've been very open about it. They can be students, they can be migrant workers, they can be industrial workers, they can be salespeople. Because uh, in in the attempt to tighten the news around ensuring that they are only from the industrial class or only from the manufacturing unit may uh, become uh, prone to red tapism. And we don't want a lot of departments to verify who the private entity is actually entering. We believe that they are genuine houses and we trust that the urban local body in close coordination with the private entity will be able to ensure that only such people enter. Also, we will have a system of accreditation and there will be proper checks as to uh, to ensure that it does not lead to, as I told you earlier, to gentrification or to you know have a studio apartments in the name of uh, affordable rental housing complexes. But having said that, we are quite confident and we are very certain that they will be very dignified spaces and they'll be good. Under the model two, which is a much wider concept and is very exciting is because we are approaching this whole entire problem in two ways. One is the model one where existing housing stock will be given out on rent. So the paradigm shift, what we are saying is that essentially earlier the housing ministry was providing houses under PMAY or Genuaram or even the erstwhile schemes was for ownership. For the first time around, we are saying that houses will be given for rentals and this actually opens up a vast scope of a, uh, a rental market which will we will come uh, to sh that shortly once as i told you that the model tenancy act is uh, presently uh, work is going on under the model two what we are saying is that there is a hospital there is a hotel and the hotel owner has got the sanction for constructing the hotel for parking facilities so on so forth but within the given area in that uh, master plan he does not have the sanction for making houses beyond what is already done for maybe the watchmen and you know generator room and all that so they will get a use permission with to construct dormitories or rooms for such category of people who are working with them or even from the neighboring areas so suppose let's take the example of a large hospital in delhi you will have a uh, ward boys, you will have pathologists, you will have people who work for lab technicians, you will have nurses, you will have uh, managerial level posts of, uh, you know, watchmen and all that. So, suppose you are able to feed in about 300 people uh, for a residential accommodation complex. So, this will then be made there and from this and from even the neighboring area, suppose uh, there is uh, availability of 60 rooms then they will be made available to the others also. So it will reduce traveling costs, it will reduce traveling time, it will reduce environmental hazards, plus also ensuring that they are able to contribute in a much better way because it will largely be like within one complex. So which is why they will just walk up to the hospital, do their duty, come back home, uh, ensure that their family is safe and secure. So uh, we feel that the private sector has huge land masses which it would want to contribute which was earlier not available. The government will be providing incentives. The central government is giving uh, two major incentives on this, uh, is uh, that the, uh, the funding for such projects in the private sector would be done under the PSL category. And we are uh, in the process of formulating the final uh, issues. We are dealing with the Ministry of Finance right now. Uh, these uh, properties, when taken loan for being made, would be uh, made available at a lower rate, lower rate of interest. So this, the project viability increases. Also that GST and uh, 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 the income tax would not apply in this case, as you know, the exemption will be there on GST and income tax. And also what we've told that if these uh, houses are made through the uh, new innovative technology, then we would be giving a technology innovation grant of about 10% or 60,000 as the case may be per uh, house. So that also becomes substantive because we, when we were working out the formulations and the metrics of it, we had to ensure that this should mean a lot to the private sector also. So an internal rate of return, IRR, is uh, close to 13%, 14%, which is a good in, uh, IRR, we would believe. Uh, but this is an ideal case scenario. It may differ from case to case and uh, region to region depending on the economy. So model two promotes that the state governments will be required to give free FSI of uh, 
uh, 1.5 as in 50 percent uh, more 50 percent this will be free of cost also that use permission charges and changes will be allowed so this is a huge incentive because you're just not able to make it with, when a plan has been approved so that will be there apart from the fact the state governments would also be ensuring trunk infrastructure in terms of roads and electricity up till the project site uh, this all will be done within 30 days of the submission of the plan a single window will certainly be there and the entire architecture will be manned on a web portal because uh, as rera is now doing it all of it the information being there uh, on uh, the website would mean that projects when submitted uh, adheres to the timelines the project funding is seen the progress is seen through geo tagging also the private entity which is investing is able to push uh, his uh, uh, claims on the various incentives that is there all on the uh, a very open fair level playing field where uh, things are there so we see that this will ensure that projects are done in good time and uh, you know the availability of rooms after once it is done you, people will be able to track suppose somebody needs a house in uh, bhopal they can go to the arhc site and we will actually be able to see that 220 rooms are available and uh, they can hire it out or you know let it out or uh, go, go and approach we have also made a provision that these way may, we have discouraged the uh, single use uh, residences as in uh, one person walking up to an ARHC and asking for a room and paying rent because he disappears, there is some problem. So it could be very difficult to track them. Or, uh, uh, you know, there could be problems of uh, behavioral issues and all that. So what we uh, told that these will be manned through uh, aggregators. Mm -hmm. They could be uh, agencies which man these rooms. So the private entity can have an understanding on an agreement with the aggregator and the aggregator then is able to give it out. And we are also very confident that this will be taken up by industries. Suppose a jewelry industry is there or a cotton industry or a textile industry is there. They will say that, okay, you have 200 rooms, give it to me of us. And what it, once it is taken in block, then the uh, payment of the fee is deducted directly from the salaries or you know some arrangement is made so that revenue stream to the private entity is continuous. Because we don't want a situation that somebody stays there for three months and he just disappears one fine day and then you don't know what's happening. So revenue stream being uh, continuous will also ensure that project viability is ensured because eventually somebody is investing his land, he's taking loan to make that money, uh, to, to make that uh, unit, has to uh, ensure that uh, the finances are really worked out well. So we've been very conscious on that. So will, the, will these uh, units also be um, subject to RERA mo monitoring during the construction? Yeah, to the extent it can be, because we have a slightly, uh, you know, there is a slight divergence that we see these as socially oriented projects. But the timelines in terms of making it is what we've told that, suppose you're doing it under the TIG, if you're doing it with the new technology, 18 months is the time. So timeline being there and investment is like, uh, uh, see, this is not ownership. Yeah. So RERA largely, you know, takes care of the ownership thing. This is rental and it's his enterprise. So uh, we will really have to look uh, the, the thing up because it's a slightly different ball game. Mm. So how long can a, uh, a tenant uh, take this house for? How long is the beneficiary's right over that property? No timelines, no timelines and uh, the aggregator can manage it. But what we've told is that 25 years, these structures will be there as ARHC. After the 25th year, in case of model one, the Januarum and the Ray houses can be reverted back to the urban local body. They can jolly well uh, continue uh, to serve for the same purpose. They can use it because we really can't see a 25 year timeline, you know, what happens then because maybe uh, uh, they can take a decision. Then for the private sector entities, we've told that 25 years is the benchmark. After that, they can uh, adopt any mechanism to continue to sell, to change the use, whatever, with the permission at that point of time. But uh, we see that the turnaround for them also will happen quite quickly, and 13%, uh, 12% uh, of our IRR will be good enough for them to get interested in the project. And how soon, uh, how many cities are you starting with? No, it's, it's open, but we are quite uh, conscious that these will be picked up by industrial cities, industrial towns, or uh, where hotel units are there, where hospitals are there. So largely the important urban centers. 
and uh, there is no cap on any area or any city. It can be taken up anywhere. What we've just told is that for a new ARHC to uh, come up, uh, and if suppose the person is taking with a new innovative technology, then 40 rooms is uh, what is being looked at as the minimum because for a uh, technology innovation to come around and for it to become uh, something that can be seen uh, properly, we need at least that much space because there are other things also that have to be mapped out. Uh, so, uh, when you talk about an employer and the um, money being deducted from salaries, that takes care of the formal sector. But this is also for the informal sector. So, what would that? Uh, who would be the aggregator in that case? And is that a new category of uh, that you will see evolving in the market? Yes, I, I really, we, we discussed this, and I don't want to name companies, but you know that there are companies who are working as aggregators without having a single room of their own. You know, and they are very big in this sector. So we see that there will be a potential employment or a, you know an entrepreneurship coming around there also, where suppose in a city uh, of uh, Thane, an aggregator comes around and he starts it as a startup and he gets hold of 50 rooms and he is able to work as an aggregator. So there is some potential uh, entrepreneurship there also that if he can tie it up with a private entity who's making ARSC. So ARSC benefits because the private sector is investing. They hear an entrepreneur comes in and he becomes the uh, aggregator for ARHCs. And there is a person who's also taking care of the transportations. So they say that, okay, I'll lug you from this unit to the industrial working site every day. Because we've told that this has to be insured because we are going by experience. We are uh, very certain that a large number of JNURM projects also suffered on account of uh, it being away from livelihood centers and transportation is not being proper. So in the ARHC, we have ensured that in the uh, note and in the policy that transport and livelihood will be addressed uh, to the extent. So that is also one big area. And uh, initial target is about 2 lakh uh, uh, 5,000 units. But we feel that we are saying this initial because uh, this is a work in progress and we will learn from it because this is the first time in uh, our uh, modern Indian history that uh, rental housing is being promoted in this manner. And if it all goes well, I can see that this can become the order of the day for people like, uh, for, uh, you know, places like Kota in Rajasthan, where a large number of students study, stay there and, you know, for industrial units in various uh, places of the country. And uh, it will really help the industries, really help the uh, workers, we are quite confident about that. So for developers who have already existing townships and there was an EWS quota that they had to build, which is still not built over uh, over the years. This we've seen it across the country. There are many such. If they you utilize that space to create uh, AHRC housing, uh, will that, will that... Uh, uh, see, uh, what was promised as a matter of policy, suppose take the example of Haryana, say, that yeah. there was a policy approach where these houses needed to get made in societies. They are already covered, covered under a policy. So you got your project sanctioned on account of the fact that you are making this project and an EWS unit will be there. Now they cannot come through the back door again and say that this is an ARHC. But they can make an ARHC uh, within that complex as a separate unit. That's not a problem, you know. But uh, the unit which has already been made as a as a policy uh, structure and you know there is a society which has come about and EW is there that cannot be designated as, as ARHC because they have taken the benefits of ARHC uh, you know once already so they cannot be benefit twice over on this we are ensuring as a ministry that these EWS houses which were to be made are now given out so the government is talking to them that you know they cannot become like ghost townships where EWS houses are just, is just left like that because uh, they will also be able to cater to such category of people only, although they may not be qualified as ARHCs. Okay. So in the, it's not that the cities don't have accommodation for the migrants, it's poor accommodation. It's badly maintained accommodation. Mm -hmm. Is there any incentive for those, maybe the chaudhris of the urban villages, for um, whichever builders who have made uh, dormitory uh, uh, type of facilities, for them to scale it up and uh, come into the scheme? Is that absolutely. absolutely because anybody who has land or even we've gone into the extent of even not having land but yeah. they can enter into agreements and partnerships and can arrange land because see uh, broadly speaking you see the benefits will excite 
uh, the B and the C category of uh, townships and you know the uh, not the very big players, and they indeed will get an opportunity to earn also because immediately you get a loan for making this at about seven and a half eight percent, which is like good uh, uh, you know percent lower than four percent lower than uh, a normal renting uh, normal loaning. Then you get relief on income tax in GST. Then you have an additional FSI of fifty percent. The state government is ensuring infrastructure. So all this, we worked out to the extent that if a project of 1,000 units was supported through uh, ARHC policy and one which was not supported. So the difference is huge. And they will find a lot of economic benefit in doing it, apart from the fact that they will be addressing a huge national concern of workers and migrants getting to live in dignified conditions. We will have national level and state level uh, creditors uh, accreditations done, which will then grade these properties also. So there will be uh, inherent in competition built in that you like you have for the hotels, but it is not like a hotel structure, but the minimum needs of water, electricity, flooring, uh, storage and kitchen and all that will be there. And if it's a dormitory, then facilities will be made uh, in a manner that uh, uh, you know the best dormitories exist and there is room for a storage and there is adequate facilities in terms of uh, civic amenities and also uh, community uh, kitchens and all that. But uh, we will also have arrangements of uh, other units like uh, crash facility and health facility and those things are there. So these we see as uh, a pilot right now and uh, we believe that uh, uh, we have studied other models in the international level also, your models of Korea, of uh, London, of uh, Germany, where this housing, is, uh, this kind of a housing is there. And uh, we can see that this will become very good potential units where these people from the urban poor and the migrant category are able to live very peacefully and not in the uh, pigeonhole uh, apartments or things that they used to live in the erstwhile uh, uh, you know, scenario. Mm. Will this also be uh, for individual units uh, uh, among the migrant uh, workers? We've seen that some of them come individually work in the city, the families are back home. And there are also some family units that come in, they bring their whole families, the child is there, the parent is there, that kind of thing. So, so to there will be a possibility of a one room apartment inclusive of a living room. Uh, there will be dormitories. So there will be a choice and we are not fixing the limit. So somebody can have uh, like 200 uh, dormitory beds and on top of that or wherever is possible in the same complex have rooms for families also with adequate facilities because we believe that uh, a large number of workers may want to stay prefer to stay with families and some migrants may want to stay uh, singly and want to keep their families back home so we have made arrangements for both and uh, uh, this will be fully operational one very good uh, incentive that i also wanted to forgot to discuss was that we are also allowing 10% of uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, units, those will be passed as 10% of the minimum uh, area would be available for commercial uh, exploitation. So uh, somebody can sell those commercial units or rent it out as well. So when we did a study with you uh, a couple of years ago, one of the things that we found among the migrant workers was that they, they wanted water power and basic facilities. They also wanted some basic storage and safety and security was a concern. The other thing was bread and ki dukan pas mein honi chahiye. We can go and eat and some basic restaurants. So all this you are factoring in. Yes, neighborhood facilities have been factored in. And in fact, this will add to the... Uh, the viability of the project. That is what we've assessed because we've also uh, calculated that there may be X number of shops which the entrepreneur would like to make the entity and would be able to earn from them. And they can be uh, very well be run by the RWAs also, for which also uh, there is a provision. You know, the Residents Welfare Association would be there. So one question more before I go to the questions that have come from our consumers. Uh, there, you know, basic facilities like healthcare and uh, education, if the families are staying there, uh, how do you accommodate that? Is there provision for that in your scheme? There is a provision for There is a very specific provision for it. For health and education, we've made it. And we've also linked it with the uh, concerned urban local body. As in, suppose there is a, this concept of urban PHC. And if it is there, and if it is not being required and only 50 room apartment has come up, so it will be linked. But just in case the, uh, the, the quantum or the load of number of people staying in a particular ARC is good enough for a 
uh, center to come up as a health clinic or something we are absolutely open about it and the rates will be which will be charged by the concerned urban local body on account of these will be at uh, residential rates and will not be treated as commercial so that's another huge benefit because electricity water all this add up to a lot of cost on the urban local body but they will be taking this again as a socially oriented project and at uh, affordable housing so uh, for uh, taxation purposes of the urban local body also this will be deemed as uh, residential project so there is benefit uh, for the entity there also okay uh, so i'm going to take some of the questions that have come we got a very large number of questions here yeah. uh, ms manish sharma who asks how to apply for this rental scheme what will be the rental for a one room set now these are the operational questions that you are going to face and we'd like to uh, like you to address them how does it does it get addressed yeah see the timeline that we are seeing because we went to the cabinet just yesterday and uh, we are waiting for the uh, final orders will come and the uh, the road map would be something like that within a month or so we would be able to talk to we've spoken to the states so uh, we will be passing out the orders to them and say in uh, uh, a month or two the rfps the request for proposals will be sent out by the state governments and uh, say within a 3 to 4 month timeline Uh, we see that certain uh, state governments and urban local bodies would be able to uh, finalize or fix uh, the entities which would be making on the basis of their project dprs and since all of it will be on the website so the dpr will also be uploaded and it will be then listed as a arsc project project once the arsc project is listed as a project as such then they would be able to go to the bank for loaning they would be able to claim Uh, uh initial loaning on the basis of their land and the dpr that we need it's an arc project so i need some amount of funding so uh, say in about 6 months time uh or maybe less because we want to go at a very fast pace because uh, we cannot wait endlessly the constructions could begin but for the model 1 we see that in 6 months time to a maximum of 9 months time these will actually be given out to the potential uh, uh, you know uh, migrants those who actually come okay uh, sir yeah. uh, but uh, what we will be doing simultaneously is that uh, sometime next month we will start the process of demand of the arscs where the urban local bodies will be able to aggregate the uh, the number of people those who want to come so that i wouldn't call it a demand survey but uh, a projection of the number of people wanting to stay in the arsc once this policy is cleared uh, in the minds of the people because we believe that uh, industry association labor associations also the bodies like naratco kradai these will come forward to, uh, with their own demands uh, from the construction units from units which are locally available as in textile units or uh, smes so uh, there can be a collection of the entire uh, and demand structure much before it's actually met okay also uh, interesting question that has come how will people manage the maintenance and upkeep of the houses because the rent is going to be low yes. also tenants uh, will be able to pay the rent or not is uncertain is it yeah maintenance will be ensured by the entity uh-huh. so that there and uh, they will probably have an understanding with the rwa as the years go by what was the second question uh will uh, how do you ensure that tenants are able to pay uh, the rent that you said is normally through the formal yes, structure that will be an institutional arrangement and the uh, it will either be through the salary deductions it can also be in terms of monthly uh, payments that a person is paying to the aggregator but the clear preference is for an institutional structure wherein uh, this is ensured that revenue stream is uh, uh, you know very very proper so even if it's not an industry it is through uh, maybe clothing unit campus or something like that or within an ex- existing uh, refrigeration unit so it will be directed either from the salary or even if it's not through the salary somebody will be aggregating it uh, for them do employers get any kind of benefits for uh, giving maybe rent subsidies and things like that yeah the employers can be entities so the employer once he becomes an entity see suppose in the covid times if he is not doing very good sales yeah. he might as well start this as a startup and uh, you know employ his own people and employ others also ensure good housing for his own unit as well as for the others so we see a good possibility that an entrepreneur who is running a hospital or a hotel or a manufacturing unit also becomes a builder of sorts by becoming a private entity within this because he has land 
Yeah. All that we require is his land because public agencies will be able to do it. The policy approach is very clear. But we are quite conscious of the fact that public lands are getting less and less because of all the work that has been going on for years. And there is a you know issue with regard to slums being located and you know land belonging to various departments because it gets into a lot of other issues. But private entities for the first time will be allowed to make it within their own existing campus is happening for the first time in this big manner and for rentals because it was earlier only housing, uh, ownership housing. So this somebody called Anup K. Malhotra who says, will these dwelling units be made by government bodies or by the private sector? And many PSUs have a huge amount of land un unutilized. Will that be taken care of for this? As I just said, these will be privately made by the private agencies because we want that these numbers should go much, much higher. Because if the government made, suppose we are running one of the largest housing programs in the world right now with one crore plus housing in PMAY. But uh, willy-nilly, this again forms a part of the entire housing stock in, that is in the country because the government is required to do only so much and is can possibly, you know, only if become a big facilitator, give a policy approach. We would want that these ARSCs should be there in every big city and therefore the, uh, the, uh, the emphasis is clearly on the private sector to pick this up, use it as an opportunity, make good houses for their workers and migrants. But we have also allowed the public agencies to do it because everything said, the government sector or the public agency cannot shy away from its inherent responsibility. So if there is a place where there are workers and the private entity is not coming and a public agency wants to make it, suppose uh, there is a indoor municipal corporation and they say that we have land and we want to do it and we want to also earn as a, you know, uh, as a body and we see great potential and this land is lying uh, like that, we have absolutely no problem doing it. So it's both ways, but we see that a large catchment, this will be used as an opportunity to earn money and do something really, really productive for the, in, uh, the working class. Uh, so interesting question, is there a CLSS-like benefit under this rental housing scheme as well? Now, what is CLSS? It's a subvention of sorts, right? You put the money in upfront and you're amortizing it over a period of 20 years of the loan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is there some CLSS kind of benefit that you're thinking of for the rent, uh, for the tenant? It's not ownership, but it's no. still housing. Rental, yeah. So this is rental. I'm, uh, yeah, because uh, no, we are not looking at that. But in case uh, this comes up at a huge demand that there is a problem of even him paying him or her paying that rent, yeah. then maybe some arrangement with the state government can be worked out or through the industry through some advance payment mechanism. But we really don't see that paying rent will become that uh, big a problem because. What we have stated as the lower denominator of the kind of rents is almost half of what was what is in the market anyways for the genuine houses particularly. And see, there will be competition. There will be a Mr. A, B, C, and the C person may say that I have a better accommodation and a lower rent. So uh, that will sell. So we believe that this will not be very exploitative in nature. And in case it is, we will ensure that systems are put in place which... Uh, uh, favor the industrial uh, workers and migrants in a very, very significant way because it cannot be a situation where money is fleeced from them and uh, it will be socially very relevant. Okay. Okay. And you are also going to grade the... Uh, get a they grade. Will be graded. Facilities will be put out. Photographs will be there on the website. So uh, any person, family wanting to shift in a particular ARHC will have access to information of what is going to get, what will be the rent, whom to pay and how to pay because the, there is a, COVID has given us this experience that we are able to work out in that space. We are able to work digitally. I'm doing this interview uh, with Magic Bricks right now. Uh, we used to earlier go to your studio. Now, you see a large number of people are there. So it's becoming virtually possible to do it. So every information will be there and a conscious decision will be taken by the migrant of where he wants to shift and what he's likely to going to get. Uh, there won't be any any deposit that they will have to give, will they? It's no, just that they pay the, ten, uh, the rent and not no deposits, right? No, that's, we have really that's one of the killers for the migrants uh, when, when they are yeah, asked for a deposit. No, 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 no. Because, see, at the end of the day, it, it may be very uh, useful, productive for the entity, but he has to be very conscious of the fact that this is 
for a segment of population which has contributed so significantly in national growth and they need to be assisted at this point of time and uh, uh, covid has also provided us this experience that they are not the kind of people who can be uh, taken for granted and there are units which have not been able to start operations because the workers are not there so we need to pay a lot of respect to them and we cannot uh, take them as uh, you know entities which will be funding their uh, uh, you know uh, through uh, what do you call that uh, bonds and those things yeah uh, sir, um, uh, there is uh, there are lots of things that people are going to ask you for definitions. It's so new uh, uh, announcement. Uh, how will the poor and urban migrant be defined under the scheme? Poor urban uh, definition of poor anybody who is migrating from a point A to point B for in search of employment will be deemed as such. And uh, uh, we really don't uh, have not developed any. Uh, protocols so that labor department will uh, do it or something. Although there are state governments which are uh, undergoing this exercise of listing the migrants, but the guidelines will be issued. It will all be there because uh, uh, we have made this very broad because we do not really want to restrict. We believe that there will be uh, there wouldn't be people who are otherwise very rich and unnecessarily want to go and stay in these places. But uh, I'm quite conscious that the state governments are uh, have initiated the process of registration of migrants. So uh, the guidelines will take care of the fact that if there is an institutional uh, listing of migrants by the labor department or the skills, this thing, so they will also be uh, incorporated within the overall ARNC framework. Okay, I've got Sheikh Naima who asked, sir, during the lockdown, we have seen how tenants were treated, where there was no such security evaluation of law or tenancy act. So what can we expect in this uh, law? How will this be protected? Uh, see, here we have ensured that within the, uh, that's a good question, actually, because we have mentioned this, uh, the, rent, uh, the Rent Control Act will really not operate for the ARNCs because we feel that uh, that creates problems both for the uh, operator as well as for the person who is staying on rent and becomes difficult if they land up in court and all that. All that we are saying is that once the Model Tenancy Act comes into place or uh, when the state governments come with the, comes up with the law, then it will be brought up un under that and that will be fairly inclusive and balanced in favour and the ministry is uh, at the moment seized of the matter. And uh, how will the rental agreements be drawn? Do you have a structured rental agreement here? The agreement will first be done between the urban local body and the uh, private entity. Then once the uh, room arrangement is done, then through the aggregator and the private entity, or the, if the entity also wants to become an aggregator himself or itself, we have no issues with that also. So uh, I think it is with, with the industry or with the unit that they are engaging in, they will have an understanding, certainly. Um, another very interesting question. If a migrant has started to work in a different city from his home state, will he get the benefit of his policy? And suppose he works in his own state, but in a different, not in the location where he has a house, will he uh, be able to benefit? Yes, yes. We, we did discuss this. It became very interesting. Suppose somebody has a uh, CLSS house in uh, a place and he is employed elsewhere and wants to stay in an ARHC. So all that we tried to work out was that not in the same district maybe or not in the same place because it's quite possible that you bought a PMA house in A place and you are working in a C place. That will be possible. That will be possible, yes. And uh, how, will you be, how will you deal with the high land prices which make this policy not very attractive proposition? What will be the eligibility criteria? So will you come out with eligibility criteria soon? Yeah, the RFP will have the eligibility criteria. See, it's essentially the land is the critical issue here. The private entity, because he is investing on his land and the money that they will either invest or, uh, through their own net worth or through the loaning mechanism. These two investments coming, but once you calculate the overall costs as we've done, maintenance, uh, infrastructure costs, uh, depreciation, all that has been taken into account and these will be uploaded very shortly on our MOVA website and we are also making a web page and uh, there is some basic information on the site right now. Uh, one can go and look up at the MOVA website, but uh, more of it will be done in uh, coming week or so where you will be able to read up the entire, you know, guideline will be there up today, today, tomorrow, anytime. Uh, so uh, the information will not be a problem.
So students are asking how they will be part of the scheme. What do they have to prove? The, uh, when a student comes in, any yeah, student can have some verification from the college institution that the person is not a local resident. And even if it was, then even then we don't have a problem because uh, migrant only working is not what we are looking at. Any migrant who is working for a purpose, who is in a city for a purpose, is a migrant to us for the purpose of ARHC. So we do not want to get into the nitty gritties of definition of migrants as defined in books of geography. But we are saying any person who has come for a vocation or is aspiring to do something of his own is a migrant for the purpose of affordable rental housing complex. Because at the end of the day, it is something that must have existed for a very long time that you come into a city, you want a rent, uh, house on rent, you want to stay there. There is nothing stopping. What we are now doing it that the government for the first time is allowing this as a policy approach, giving incentives to the private sector, giving incentives, the state government is giving incentives so that these become the order of the day and the workers, such as students, tourists, uh, manufacturing unit workers, uh, you know, you have various kinds of people, salespeople, they do not have a good house. So they all can stay in a rental complex and uh, can live a productive, dignified life. So I'll take just two questions more. I know we are uh, over time, but these are uh, very genuine questions. Are interest rates fixed for a loan take, uh, taken to buy a house under PMAY scheme? Will the same be done for rental housing? I think what they mean is that when it came to uh, PMAY, there was a, uh, a amount that you fixed that they, it can't go beyond that. So similarly in rental housing, will you fix the rates? The, the rates will be fixed uh, for the model one. The rate will be fixed by the urban local body and the uh, entity. And the revision of the rate, we've been very conscious there, can be done only 8% in two years' time, maximum of 20% in five years' time. Okay, so this is the order. So it does not increase exponentially. And likewise, it will keep increasing. So it will be affordable rent. It will be worked out very closely. Also private, for the private entity in model two, the rents will be fixed by him uh, and the uh, state government uh, to the urban local body will certainly be looking after it. But again, the extension of the rents will be 4%, 8% to 2 years, uh, going to a maximum of 20% in 5 years. So, uh, the extraction on account of you know rent raises will not be there. Okay. And one last question, Where will, what will be the location of these projects near job hubs or in the city centers? Uh, and are there, is there land actually in these places? Or yeah. if you uh, go into the periphery and build, then how will you uh, accommodate? Are not, we are looking at only areas notified under the either the Town Planning Country Act or the Industrial Act or the Special Area Development Act, and those kind of things. If there is an area where the state government feels that, yes, a large number of housing projects can actually come around, they may very well declare it, uh, notify it as such, and then can take up planned development there also. Having said that, we... Uh, want to ensure that these uh, these will actually be a success. See, governments used to make it anywhere because they probably had the order and, you know, uh, uh, nobody was observing uh, whether the economics by, had been worked out by the concerned local body. But the private investor here will certainly look at the economics of the location. And if it is far away, he will probably not invest. So what we are saying is, is that once the private entity comes in the rental space, they will be able to take much better call because they will look at the economics of how it works and it will invariably be in close to the city center, within markets, or in industries already located, either in industrial development zones. We have these, uh, like, Nordic Development Authority has an industrial separate zone, or probably the all cities has these, you know, Rudisco and UP, uh, state industrial authorities and all that. So it could be very well there. But uh, facilities will have to be inbuilt, and we believe that these will be very close to the working sites. This is uh, a very important uh, uh, aspect of our policy that they have to be close to the work sites. So, one last question from me. This is my question: Will you see redevelopment of existing old um, housing, housing that has been fifty years, uh, upwards of fifty years? There are layouts, there are housing units there. Do you, will, you, uh, will this also propel redevelopment so that land is freed up for this kind of housing? 
we haven't really spoken about redevelopment as such. There were certain policy considerations which came into fact that existing structures may be developed as ARSCs. So for model one within the housing stock of January and Ray, we had taken this up. But perhaps as the MTA comes around, the Model Tendency Act, uh, they are very much a part of uh, you know the area that comes within it. You know. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. It, uh, uh, appreciate your coming so far. Log on to the MOA website. We will ensure that the guideline, uh, brief uh, concept note is there. But the nuts and bolts uh, from the RFP uh, should be there up next week. So that can be looked at. And I'd like to tell the consumers who uh, are continuing to ask the questions that we would pass the questions on to the ministry. And I'm sure you would like to get them yeah. answered and we put it back on our site too. Thank, Thank you. you.